Okay, so here's a problem. We're going to draw the shear moment diagram for uh, this one. This one's not very sophisticated, but I did want to go over one that had an applied couple and show how that affects the uh, shear moment diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my reactions. So we have a pin at A, so I'll assume I have a reaction in the Y direction and here at B. Uh, technically I have one in the X direction, but you notice that there are no forces in the X direction, so that's going to be zero. So I'm going to go over here to the side and let's find those reactions. So I'll sum moments about A, use right hand rule for my sign convention, and summing moments about A, the 600 pound force creates what? Negative or positive moment? Negative. negative. So I've got negative 600 pounds, and the moment arm is 10 feet. Then I have the actual couple, which creates positive or negative moment according to my sign convention. Negative. So that'll just be minus 4,000 pound feet. And then I have my reaction force, BY, creating positive moment with the rea uh, moment arm of 20 feet. So what is BY equal to? This looks like 6,000 plus 4,000 is 10,000. 10,000 divided by 20. That's 500. So then we can sum forces in the y direction and find our remaining unknown ay. So we have ay acting up, by also acts up, and then we have 600 pounds acting down. So it looks like ay is 100 pounds. So I have my reaction. <coughs> So I'm going to go ahead and draw my template for my diagram. So there's my, my boundaries. Uh, I know something's going to happen here in the shear diagram as I go from left to right. So that's a point of interest for me. I also know that something's going to happen here in my moment diagram as I go from left to right. So that's another uh, point of interest. So I'll include all those. So let's go ahead and uh, indicate my positive x-axis, my positive shear, and that all my values on my shear diagram will have the units of pounds. Okay? So, let's start with the shear diagram. Working from the left, looking at my reaction here, what kind of shear is that? Positive or negative shear? Positive, and we got AY to be positive, so we're going to start off at 100. Now remember, our basic uh, relationships that we use to build the diagram are that the change in shear between any two points is the integral under the load curve. So as I look at the first 10 feet, what is the area under the load curve? Zero. So that means there'll be no change in shear. So that means that I will have still a value of 100. We also know that the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the load. And the value of the load is zero. So zero slope is a horizontal line. So you can see that our shear diagram is constant over the first 10 feet and equal to positive 100. Now, as I go from the left side to the right side and pass by this 600 pound force, the change in shear is equal to that. So what is that, a positive force or a negative force? Negative. negative. So that means I'll drop negative 600. So 100 minus 600 is negative 500. Okay, 
the change in shear is the area of the load curve. Looking at the loading all the way across, what's the value of the load? Zero. So there should be no change, and I should hit negative 500 on this side. Does that match my shear? Yeah, you notice that this uh, force is up because I got a positive value, but a, sh a force acting up on the right-hand side is negative shear, so it matches. So I, that should be comforting. And then finally, the shape of the curve in between is given by this relationship, which says what? The slope is equal to the load. The load is zero. Zero slope is a horizontal line. And really not a bad shear diagram. Pretty easy to deal with. <clears throat> now let's do the moment diagram. So I'll again establish my positive x-axis, positive moment. All my values will be pound feet. And let's, let's construct the moment diagram. Do I know the moment any place in the structure? Yeah, A is a pin, it's external pin, so I know that the moment zero here. And on the other end, I have another pin, so the moment should be zero there. So I've got places that I can match. Is your internal moment not equal to what will be on the graph then? No. Okay. Maybe, but probably not. Now we have the, the relationships that guide this construction are that the change in moment is the area under the shear diagram and that the slope of the moment diagram is equal to the shear. So starting with this relationship first, what's the chain, What's the area of the shear diagram over the first 10 feet? A thousand and it's positive, right? So that means if I start off at zero and I add a thousand to it, uh, I get something like this. The slope of that diagram is equal to the shear. The shear is constant and positive. So here's a constant slope that's positive. Again, if we check this out, you would see that it would be 100 to 1 would be the slope. <coughs> Now, the change in moment, um, do I do the next 10 feet or do I look at just the next 5 feet? Yeah, it's a little, little tricky. You have to look at just the first 5 feet because I've got to consider this concentrated moment as I go from the left side to the right side. My moment diagram is going to have a corresponding jump. So let's just deal with the first 5 feet. So what's the change? On, in the sheet, on the moment is the area of the shear diagram. That would be 5 times 500. That's 2,500 negative. So 1,000 minus that gets me to negative 1,500. Right? And what's the slope? Constant. Given by the shear, the shear is constant and negative. So here's a line with a constant negative slope. Now, clockwise applied moments create positive change in your shear diagram. So I'm going to go from minus 1,500, I'm going to add 4,000. So 1,500 plus 4,000 brings me to, I think that's 2,500, right? shoots right up. And now the change in moment on this last five feet is given by the area of the shear diagram. So that'll be five times 500, which is negative 2,500. That brings us back to zero. And the shape given by the slope is the shear. The shear is constant and negative. So we should get a value that looks like that. Is there a line connecting your negative 1500 or 2500? Yes. I mean, you could draw it, but it really doesn't mean anything. Okay, All you're able to predict is the moment just to the left, and then it changes instantaneously to something just on the right. So what's the value in between? 
We don't know. It's, it, we don't know. It's kind of hard mathematically to define what that is. I mean, really, it can be there's an infinite number of values between there. But all we care about are the extremes. So in this case, um, if I'm worried about designing this beam, what's the maximum moment I should concern myself with? 2,500. 2,500. If I'm doing reinforced concrete, I might be worried that I have a positive 2,500 moment and a negative... 1500 moment, I have to deal with both of those. Why is that 4000 positive? Which? Clockwise. Uh, clockwise, uh, clockwise makes a positive change. Is that defined by the. Uh, it's what just, was defined by the. It has not, nothing to do with the. Well, I should say nothing. Um, is it just the opposite of the right hand rule? It is not the, the right. Way. Right hand rule is only for statics. Okay. So this is a bending moment. Okay. Oh, so this applied moment results positive. in a positive bending moment change. This is an applied moment, not an internal moment. The internal moment responds this way. Okay, any questions about that?